Hi, everybody. Good morning and welcome once again to another Friday edition of the Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen. Thank you so much for being aboard with us for this Friday. Oh, uh, it's so glad to see you out there and front and center. And we're here for the next hour. And of course, uh, while we're here, we're going to take a little time with you for the next hour to have a little conversation and drink our coffee and have a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being along with us today. The purpose of the show, of course, you know, while having coffee, you engage you in a conversation. So you may be at your job right now. You may be at work. You may be at home on your computer. Now, if you're at work and you have that 15 minute coffee break, which I still imagine that they would do today, take that 15 minutes and spend at your desk. And uh, of course, you can watch the show at the same time. And then when the 15 minutes is over, you're still at your desk, you're still at your computer and you can multi multitask any way you like and watch the show at the same time. But whatever time you can spare, if you can't spare the whole hour with us, which we hope you that, that you do, if you can't spare the whole hour, please, at least we want to thank you for sparing whatever time that you can uh, send with us. We want to say hello to everybody watching on Facebook. So sell hello Facebook and there's YouTube and my friends over there, Instagram. How are you today? We're broadcasting on three places. And so uh, if you can't catch us on one, you can always catch us on the other. Now, if you're watching us on Facebook, of course, we want you to tag your friends at this moment while you speak. Tag your friends and uh, bring them over to us and... Um, if they like the show, and we hope that they do, you know, they'll be part of us uh, permanently like you are. And thank you so much for being faithful to us. For those of you who are watching us on uh, Instagram, well, all you have to do is subscribe to us. Subscribe to Instagram and uh, you'll catch us every week. And for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, we invite you to always subscribe to our YouTube channel. And therefore, when you do that, uh, you can catch us online at any time. You'll get notification when we come on live as we are right now or when we send as so much as a uh, entertaining video, anything like that. And because you subscribe, you'll be informed when these things happen. So thank you so much for being along with us. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's lift our cups, our glasses and our beverages and your coffee, whatever it is. And salute and excuse me while I shoot up. Uh, can't beat it. That's the first jolt of the day. And you look, you can call it anything you want. Your first jolt or your morning pickup, uh, morning pick me up, I should say. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being along with us on this Friday. Later on in the program, not too far away, we have our 2020 feature coming up. And that 2020 feature consists of sports, sports update with Brian Camp, 20 past the hour, not too far away. He'll be along with us uh, calling in from Charlotte, North Carolina via telephone, of course. And of course, he'll give us what's happening in sports like he does every week. And 20 to the hour, DJ Pete will be here with entertainment news and reciting all of those birthdays of people of notoriety within the business and within this week. So that's all coming up. And it's you and I, I'll, I'll have a lot of things coming for you. Now, when you come in and I see more people are coming in, so I wanna say uh, good morning to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, when you come in, feel free to join in. Uh, you could talk to us and we hope that you do. Talk to us and you know, uh, whatever you wanna talk about, we'll certainly entertain you. and. Uh, Please, by all means, if you're coming out of a place other than New York City, okay, don't worry about New York City. Other than New York City, if you're coming out of another country or another city, another state somewhere, and you're watching us live, please, when you talk to us, you know, give us your weather forecast wherever you are. We we'll like to check in on you and see what your weather is like. Uh, it's not mandatory that you do that, but we would like that. We would like that. That's one of the regular things that we have here. New Yorkers, don't worry about it. I have that covered. We're coming to you live from New York right now, and I have that covered for you. So uh, you guys chime in and do what you have to do. So let's take time, ladies and gentlemen, to clap our hands. I want to clap my hands for you particularly because you are the ones and the backbones of this show. And we thank you so much for being here uh, so diligently and uh, so faithfully, loyally, whatever adjectives you want to use. We want to thank you for that. And uh, also the hand clap goes out to all. And I say this every week because it's, it's very important to me. All of the people, the doctors, the nurses, all hospital personnel and all of the uh, uh, 
uh, first responders such as the firefighters, the police officers, all the bus operators, subway operators, all the people who run the mom and pop stores, the laundromats, the grocery stores, the supermarkets, everybody, they pitched in and they made sure that even though we were under that deep pandemic uh, about a year and a half ago when no one was out, they made sure they stayed open and made sure that they took care of all of us. And we still need you all today because the pandemic is still on, not as fierce as it was, but it's still on and still alive and well. So we, and with that in mind, we wanna make sure that you continue to proceed with caution, by protecting yourselves, your family, your friends, your neighbors, and everyone around you, even me, if I pass you by in the street, you know, you're gonna wanna wear your mask. Uh, and uh, especially if you're indoors, by the way, if you're taking mass transit, you're gonna wanna wear a mask. Or if you're going to fly anywhere, you're going to wanna wear a mask. Uh, that's uh, it's very important. Now, it's not a mandate that uh, they show your passport in, a, in an airport, that didn't happen yet. I don't see why not. So being, being that said, or that being said, I should say, maybe what you ought to do is like, if you're going to do any flying, you know, and if you're going to go a long distance, particularly long distance, right? When you get back from your trip, you might want to go to get checked out, you know, get a test, get tested. They're very easy. They're, they're free. And um, it only takes five seconds. Now, if you, let's say, for instance, if you're going on a trip and you want to stay a long period of time, Get tested when you get there. There are places where you can go. Get tested when you get there and then test it when you come back because you don't know who's sitting on the plane with you. You're sitting next to people on the plane and you don't know who they are. They could be vaccinated and maybe they are vaccinated. We don't know. But you're going to want to make sure that uh, you're safe. And of course, you know, be vaccinated. Of course, that's another thing because you want to protect all of your family and the children are back in school. You already know that. And teachers, of course, you want to be vaccinated because you're taking care of all of our children and we want to make sure they're safe. If you're in the hospital or any kind of position uh, that's, that's, that, that, that's around people, that's public, uh, you want to be vaccinated, especially in the hospitals. I mean, you're taking care of people. Uh, you can't take care of people unless you take care of yourself. That's, that's a fact. So uh, please uh, do that. Get vaccinated. Uh, there shouldn't be a even a question about it. Now, that's something that I, I endorse here on the show each week. Uh, a lot of people probably disagree. And then again, you have the right to do that. But that's an endorsement I make every week because I think it's safe. It's safe to take the vaccination. It's uh, it, it helps out a lot. You see how many people uh, benefit from it. People and there are a lot of people who did not, you know, uh, benefit because they didn't take it. All right. And we want everyone to benefit. We want everyone to be healthy. You know, we have three vaccines on the market, as you already know. We have uh, the Johnson & Johnson, Moderna and Pfizer. All right. Those are the three vaccines available. And you can get those from your pharmacist. You can get that from your uh, uh, primary doctor. He may have a, a supply of it and you can take it. Uh, and if you're not vaccinated, make sure that you get your first two doses because there's only one dose for um, J&J. But for Moderna and Pfizer, you get two doses that will make you fully vaccinated. And then uh, we move on. For those of you who have already been fully vaccinated, vaccinated already, six to eight months after you got that initial, that last shot, that second shot, uh, you ought to go for your booster shot. If you are at the age of 65 and up, 65 and up. Now, they're working on the younger set right now as we speak. We're going to be getting to those pretty soon. We're working on the kids even from five up. We're working on that as well. And we want to make sure that everybody is safe. So if you are at the age of 65 and over, or you may have a uh, pre-condition, pre-existing condition that needs uh, attention, you know, like obesity, you know, or cancer, you know, something like that. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to join in. They'll allow you to do it as well, along with the people who are 65 and over. Get vaccinated, get booster shots, the booster shots. Now, when you get your booster shot, what you wanna do is go in there wherever it is and take your card with you. They're gonna, you know, you're gonna to wanna to need that card because they're gonna to have to notate that you had gotten your booster shot. They're gonna date it and everything. So you gotta make sure all of that. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, let's be safe. Let's, it, it's only common sense, ladies and gentlemen. It's only common sense uh, that this goes on. It's common sense. And um, don't let anyone tell you different. 
you know, the, the shots are safe. Uh, a lot of places that are mandated that you should take the test, that you have to take the test, all right? Either you take the test or you get vaccinated. You know, there are jobs like that are saying that you, you're going to actually either get vaccinated or you're going to have to take the test once a week and you're going to have to produce that. That's proof. You produce the fact that you are vaccinated or you produce the fact that each week on your own time uh, get tested and you have to bring that proof to your job in order to maintain. Um, a lot of people have a, a problem with that uh, uh, mandation. Uh, but, you know, we have to protect each other. We have to protect people. We have to protect children and people who are more vulnerable to uh, the corona, uh, uh, COVID-19 and the uh, and the other things, the other elements, too. Uh, you know, co you know, Corona-19 and you also have the, uh, the Delta variant and you want to make sure. OK, that being said, too, also the flu season is here. And of course, that's a different shot. That's a different shot. The flu shots are available right now for all of you who uh, desire to take it. And I hope you do. Uh, but remember, uh, you know, take it within, I guess, two weeks apart from uh, the, um, uh, the vaccine, the, the COVID vaccine. You want to take it two weeks apart. You don't want to take one right after the other, you know. But the flu season is here. Now, the flu, the, the COVID-19, the, the vaccinations for COVID, does not take care of the flu. That's a different thing. It does not take care of the flu. So you're gonna to wanna to have to take the flu shot to take care of the flu. And the flu shot does not take care of COVID. So all of those different uh, um, shots, and lots of shots, we, we have to be healthy, we have to be safe. Especially if you're, you're getting older, you're at the age where there are so many shots available. Now they have the shingle shot for older people, 50 and over, and then they have uh, shots for uh, pneumonia and all kinds of shots. And you know, when you were younger, like 21 years old, there was nothing you couldn't do. Uh, you only needed one doctor to check up on you. And now when you get older, you have to, your, your primary doctor, your cardiologist, your urologist, uh, for the women, your gynecologist, you got all of these things going on, you know? So, and in other words, let's be safe and do good. Want to say hello more to people. Hey, DJ Pete is in the house. Uh, DJ Pete, good morning to you. Brian uh, popped in. Good morning, uh, Brian. Uh, my good friend, Buddy Seaver, uh, looking good. Oh, you're looking good, buddy. Thank you uh, for that compliment. Uh, <laughs> I like your compliments. You're very good, buddy. Buddy and I used to work together at a station called uh, W... Um, w uh, what was that station buddy it was so many uh, we, no well we only work with one station together uh w uh, b uh w the uh, evd wevd uh in new york it no longer exists that's probably why i forgot about it wevd we used to work together there and uh known him for a long time and i believe you're still at bloomberg right you're still at bloomberg or did you retire yet did you retire <laughs> and if you didn't retire, you're probably on your way, right? Okay, so anyway, thank you so much for that. Uh, we've got a weather forecast coming from DJ P, who, by the way, as I said, will be here uh, 20 to the hour with this part of the 2020 feature. DJ Pete has the weather in Portland, Maine. That's where he is right now. He, he was in Boston the last time. I think he was on the air with us, Boston, but now he's back in Maine, and it's cloudy, turning into sunshine later on today. We'll have a high in... Portland, Maine at 68 degrees and the low temperatures, that, that's for the low, right? That's uh, 60, uh, 68 tonight. It's 71 now. That's what it looks like here. I think the numbers are backwards, but it's always higher during the day and lower at night. So he says the high 68, low 71. Hmm. I don't get that one, Pete. Usually the temperatures are lower than the uh, temperatures during the day temperatures but but this is what he says it's high 68 degrees and low temperatures uh 71 i don't know well anyway we'll, we'll, i guess he'll he'll straighten that out anyway uh we asked the rest of you if you're not from new york ladies and gentlemen uh please give us your weather forecast and with that being said i'm going to give you mine right now uh we've got this it's not bad give us your weather forecast and with that being said i'm going to give you mine right now uh, we've got this. It's not bad.
It's not bad weather. Uh, it's 63 degrees right now here in New York City. That's what we have at this particular moment. So the temperatures are going down. We're looking forward to, uh, well, some people are looking forward to winter this year. <laughs> you can have my share of it, as I always say. Right now, here's, it's Friday, and we've got sunny skies. It's going to be sun and clouds mixed together. And we'll have a high around 70 degrees, so that's not bad. Uh, winds will be uh, west-northwest at 10 miles per hour. For uh, tonight, it will be cloudy skies, low 53 degrees, winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. For Saturday, uh, we got cloudy skies early, then followed by partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. So nothing wet, nothing wet uh, as it was initially said uh, for Saturday, but it looks better than than I expected now. We'll have a high uh, tomorrow, 59 degrees, Saturday, 59 degrees, and winds will be light and variable. Saturday night will be clear to partly cloudy, and we'll have a low uh, 49 degrees. Winds will be light and variable, and as we look towards Sunday, as we wrap up our weekend, it's gonna be mostly sunny skies. That's a better day out of the uh, whole weekend, but it doesn't have any, we're not producing any rain for the entire weekend. So mostly sunny skies for Sunday and uh, we'll have a high 63 degrees. Winds will be light and variable. Now, what's the weather like in your area? I hope it's fine. As you come in, please uh, give us your weather forecast. I wanna say hi to you guys uh, coming in on Facebook and uh, all of you guys right there, I see you right there. Uh, on Instagram, thank you for being along with us, and all of you guys on YouTube as well. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, excuse me while I shoot up. Mm. Oh boy, that's delicious, that's delicious. That's, <laughs> that's what the coffee hour is all about. If you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, you're popping in. I see people starting to pop in right now. You're just joining us. And if you're joining us for the first time, uh, don't make it your last time. Uh, make us your weekly habit. It's the coffee hour. And we're here every Friday between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., one hour, one full hour each week. And, of course, it's you and I with conversation and sports and entertainment and all kinds of great things coming up. So we want to thank you for that. Okay, uh, we, we let's mosey along here because we got a, a few things to talk about. First of all, uh, you've heard about the story about uh, General Colin Powell. I call him General. He was also the Secretary of State uh, before he passed away. He's retired General. General Colin Powell, he will always be the General. General Colin Powell, as you already know, passed away this week, uh, early this week. And uh, that was a sad day, for, you know, to hear from all of us because, um, you know, uh, he was a, a very lovable man. Uh, he was friends, presidents, kings, and all kinds of people. And he served in the military. He served his country well. And um, he passed away. He died at the age of 84. And that was due to uh, complications of COVID. Now, let me explain something to you. When I first heard this news <laughs> that he died from complications of COVID <clears throat> and he was fully vaccinated, by the way, kind of scared me. I, 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 I had to take a back seat and, 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 and process it. I, I was trying to process this whole thing. It didn't make sense. He was fully vaccinated, but he died from COVID. Now, what I didn't know later on, the reporting came along that he also suffered with multiple myeloma. And this is a disease that I know firsthand about because my mom passed away from that. It's a blood and bone uh, cancer and it affects the immune system. It cuts down the immune system. So that being said, Colin Powell was dealing with that. And even though he was vaccinated, uh, his immune system wasn't up to par. So the, 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 vaccine, the vaccine didn't help much. It didn't help much because uh, he wasn't, his immune system was totally shot. And so that kind of scared me a little bit, but even still, even though you know that, you still want to take care of yourself. You still want to proceed with caution, even if you are vaccinated. That's why I always say, even if you're going out in public, especially in closed quarters, you're going to uh, restaurants and bars and everything like that. Uh, they're going to ask you to wear your mask indoors. Or if they don't do that, then the other option is that they're going to ask you for your passport, 
uh, and that's your proof of uh, of being vaccinated, fully vaccinated. And you should keep that with you at all times. Now, if you don't want to keep the card, and a lot of people don't, and, and a lot of people are wise to it, what they want to do is they want to, I, I guess, uh, uh, keep their 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 their, their, uh, uh, their passport and their telephone. So all they have to do when they ask, uh, people ask. You can produce it right from your telephone and you can have a seat and you don't necessarily have to wear a mask because they're checking out people who are fully vaccinated. We're going to talk more about that coming up later right now. It's 20 past the hour. Brian Camp is on the phone right now. And of course, he's here with us as usual via telephone from Charlotte, North Carolina with the latest developments in today's world of sports. Brian, I didn't stay up for that game, the rest of the game. What was the outcome? Because I knew when I turned the TV off, uh, the Dodgers uh, were out in front. Uh, I think it was like, what was it, four to two or something like that? They won 11 to two. Oh, they won 11 to two. Well, when I, okay, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I, yeah I, I, I'm not too happy about that, but, um, you know, <laughs> being a Giants fan, but I am wearing my um, Jackie Robinson jersey on today and my Brooklyn hat. Um, not because I, I like the Dodgers, no. <laughs> He had said that he would get the vaccine 
but has declined to provide clarity when asked repeatedly for weeks to expand upon reasoning for his refusal. Now, Rolovich, who was 42 years of age, initially said in mid-August he would comply with the vaccine mandate, but later confirmed he applied for religious exemption, which was denied. A lot of people applied for religious exemption. Um, he was uh, specify his religious, but he would not specify his religious beliefs. So Rolovich revealed in July that he would not get vaccinated and couldn't attend the Pac-12 excuse me, the Pac-12 media day in person because of it. He was the only unvaccinated head coach in the Pac-12 and, and had won a mask during games. Now, yesterday, it was the update, um, or the other day, he, uh, Rolovich will be using the university, will be suing the University of Washington State for illegal termination in part because of discriminatory and vindictive behavior by athletic dep- the director, Pat Chung, since Rolovich did not meet the requirements in his contract, which has paid him $3 million annually thus far. Therefore, Rolovich will not continue to be paid by the school. So, you know, again, this is another another touchy situation. Um, why people do not want to take the vaccination. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I'm worn out. I'm drawn out. But you have that right. Um, now, it is it is a, a touchy situation if you so to lose your job, you know, over this. Um, you should not be forced to do anything that you don't want to do. And should should your job be on the line? I think you know it, it, it has to be a better way. You don't want to lose your job because you know it's not a law, but it's a it's a state law. So we just hope that this will be resolved. In the National Football League, former wide receiver South Florida native Kenbrell Armand Tompkins, 33, pleaded guilty on Monday in Miami Federal Court on one count of unauthorized access device fraud and one count of aggravated identity theft. He was still in identities to fraudulently obtain coronavirus related unemployment insurance benefits in California. Tompkins used the stolen identities of numerous. Uh, Florida residents to attain fraudulent, fraudulent unemployment insurance benefits from the state of California. He was using debit cards, stealing their de- identity. Uh, we don't know what, when he'll be sentenced, but it was a plea bargain. He did do a plea bargain, so we don't know whether he will do time or not do time. Baseball, as you know, um, we're in the, um, game six is tonight between the Astros and the Red Sox in the American League. And Saturday, we will have game six between the Dodgers and the uh, Atlanta Braves. So we're coming down to the end of the, um, of, of, of the baseball season as we head into the cooler, colder months. Mm-hmm. This day, October 22nd, 1884, Sporting Life announces that the pennant winners will meet in a three-game series October 23rd through the 25th at Polo Grounds, New York City. 1939, NBC becomes the first network, the first, to televise a pro football game at Evans Field. The Dodgers beat the Eagles 23-14. to Now you say, now this is something I've just learned. I didn't know that there was a Brooklyn Dodgers that played football. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Brooklyn Dodgers play baseball, and there's a Brooklyn Dodgers that play baseball and football. And they both play their home games at Evans Field. Now, the Brooklyn Dodgers of the football side only lasted from 1930 to 1943. This is something that just blew me out the mind. I'm saying to myself, when I looked this up, somebody made a mistake. But as you know, I did my research, and I said, wow, this is unbelievable. So, uh, 1967, Joe DiMaggio, Mr. Coffey himself, is hired as executive vice president of the Oakland A's by Charlie Finley, former owner. In 1997, the coldest World Series game ever as the Miami Marlins versus the Cleveland Indians. It was 38 degrees. 
I guess in the World Series, you're not going to postpone those games. 38 degrees, that's football weather. Today, in birthdays, on this day, um, Naoto is watching. I hope he's watching. But Ichiro Suzuki was born in Kasuji, Japan. I know I'm saying that wrong. Forgive me. And in 1976, NBA former NBA basketball player or NBA coach was born in Zionsville, Indiana. And ladies and gentlemen, that is sports. Oh. Okay, well, we're at the end of the baseball season. Um, now we got football to think about. Uh, things are happening there, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we, we got so much uh, to look forward to. And I mean, I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you also have the uh, the the uh, the Super Bowl, right? Well, I'm just going too far ahead, but there's a lot of things to look forward to in sports, anyway. Well, you got the basketball season and you got the hockey season. Yeah. You know, you got four major sports yeah. um, that was all on last night, believe it or not. You don't yeah. see that too often. Four of the major sports in North America yeah. were on at the same time last night. And I didn't know they had a Brooklyn Dodgers football team. You learn something new every day. But then again, when yeah. it expanded, I, I, was, I wasn't even born yet anyway. When it, when I wasn't born either. Yes, you know, so but I, I wouldn't know Yes, it's that. good to know this. And, uh, yeah. Something that um, I have learned, and I'm going to um, understand and do some more research on other things as well. And I wasn't even born, and I'm a Yankee fan. I wasn't even born when the Yankees were originally the Highlanders. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, of course, right. the Mets were the Metropolitans. Uh, remember, the uh, Knicks were the New York Knickerbockers. Remember that? That's right. <laughs> Yes, the New York they cut, they yeah. cut down. They cut down all of these names because they they are a little too long for people to say the New York Knickerbockers. I, I always say that we're in an we're in a, a certain age where now we become verbally uh, what's the terminology I want to use uh, verbally lazy. So we cut down things. Uh, we don't say the Metropolitans. We say the Mets. We we don't say the Highlanders. We say the Yankees. Uh, we don't say. Uh, Runs battered in. We say RBI. You know, you get the you get the whole idea. Yeah, yeah. And here's one: the Oakland A's uh, original name was the Oakland Athletics. That's right. To play in Philadelphia. That's right. That's right. A lot of those baseball play uh, uh, teams uh, changed their names uh, from where they used to be. I, I remember when Milwaukee. Uh, uh, I think they were called the. Um, no, the Atlanta Braves were the Milwaukee Braves in the early days. That's right. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it, it changes. Who knows? Who knows what they're going to be later on in life? Who knows? Brian, thanks a lot, man. We'll catch you back here next week, and you have a great weekend. So do you and everybody else out there. Take care. Okay. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. That is Brian Camp with the latest developments in today's world of sports. Sports update. He's here every Friday, of course, and of course he gives us uh, what's happening in sports. You guys like sports. Uh, um, well, I do, and I'm looking forward to a lot of uh, great events that are coming up, you know, as time goes on, the weather gets colder here, and uh, especially gets colder here in New York. I want to say hello to a lot of people out here. If you're just joining us, thank you for joining us. Uh, the name of the show is called The Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen. I'm with you up until uh, uh, 11 Eastern. That's our time here, Eastern. Everything is Eastern here, uh, so set your clocks accordingly. And uh, we're here every Friday between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern. And uh, we're on Facebook, we're on uh, YouTube, and we're on uh, Instagram, too. So we've got three places to, to go. Hey, I want to say, say uh, hello to a couple of people out there, you guys. Uh, special hello. Going out to George uh, Joseph. George, uh, George, where you been? I haven't seen you in a long time. I see George is out there. Uh, good morning to you, George. I haven't seen you. And I, and I thought about you the other day, too. I was hoping everything was OK. And I see everything is OK. You're out there. All right. Uh, and you may not, Brian, if you're watching, uh, you may not see these people that I'm about to introduce to you because they're on the other Facebook page. I have two of them. I have the, the regular one that you're watching, and then I have the fan base page. And I want to say hello to Mary. Mary decides she's going to go on the fan base page this morning. She's out there. Good morning to you, Mary. Uh, thank you for being. It, it, no matter where you go, I don't. I don't care. It's just as long as you're there. Hey, there's a uh, Sabine. Sabine out there from Spain, a good friend of mine. Known her for a while, and she's checking in. Thank you for being there. I love you. And I haven't seen you in a long time, haven't heard from you in a long time. So um, 
Oh, by the way, Mary is saying good morning to uh, you, Brian, and you too, Pete. You can't see it because you're on the other page, but she's on the fan base page, so she's out there. So uh, there you go. Uh, and okay, so yeah, so Sabine, out in, uh, out in Spain, directly from Spain. Oh boy, how, Sabine, let me ask you a question. I hope you're still there. What's the weather like out there? What do you got out there, right there? You know, if you could just, you know, let me know what's going on there. Uh, I, I like to get people who are not from New York City and they're in another country or another town or something like that. Give us our weather forecast. That's what we do out here. Uh, and uh, so thank you so much for being along with us. And thank you, one, and thank you all. I see more people are coming in. I see more people there on uh, YouTube and there's Instagram. They're all here. They're all bouncing in and out. And uh, we thank you so much for being that. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, excuse me while I shoot up. <laughs> Remember back in the old days, uh, those of you who are around my age, there was a uh, coffee called um, uh, Chock Full of Nuts. And I think that was the slow, I think they, I think that slogan was the coffee of coffee. Was it chock full of nuts? They have so many chocolate nuts, so, so many coffees on the market, and some of them didn't even stay around long enough anyway. So uh, anyway, so there you go. Um, we were talking, uh, I also wanted to say, we, we know in Powell's death, uh, we mentioned that already, uh, but I also want to say and give my, uh, my condolences and my heartfelt wishes out to um, Carmen Bolden Day. Carmen Bolden Day, her son uh, was murdered uh, this past week. Uh, you've probably heard about it in the news. Uh, uh, Janelli, Janelli, uh, I think, no, his name, yeah. Uh, Jelani, Jelani, Jelani Day uh, was shot. And I, I, I don't know what, what, what's with these guns. Uh, there was a time when people who owned guns, they owned them, but they didn't use them. Some people never use their guns, but they just want to use them as protection. And that's one of the amendments that we have uh, to bear arms. And everybody has a right to do that. But uh, we got to watch out who's actually bearing arms. And people who are just buying guns out of stores like they're, like they're purchasing candy, you know. And, um, and this, this is where our young people go. Our young people are all swept up in this whole thing. And uh, so I, I just want to send my, my condolences out to uh, to, to uh, Carmen Bolden Day. You also heard on the news. Did you hear this on the news today? And this is sad news. This is really sad news. Alec Baldwin uh, shoots a, a, a prop pistol, right? A prop gun, right? And killed uh, one person and injured another. And the actor discharged... Uh, a prop gun on the, uh, it, 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 he was do, doing his movie. He was making a movie in New Mexico called The Rust. And uh, unfortunately, uh, right now, they're not charging anyone with it. It was a fully accident. But the um, Helena, Helena Hutchins, Hutchins, Helena Hutchins was the one that got killed. She was 42 years old. She was the director of photography on, on the movie. So uh, she was rushed and then she passed away. And also uh, the director of the movie, Joel Souza, who's 48 years old. Uh, he's in the hospital right now, recuperating or uh, recovering. And uh, we want to say our prayers for him too. But that was uh, that was an interesting story. And you just wonder how these these guns, the, those guns that you see in the movie, they're fake guns. They shoot them. They shoot blanks. And they used to call them air guns. They used to call them air guns, but they, now they call them prop guns. You know. Uh, but, you know, what comes out of their guns, and they used to shoot blanks, blanks, right? But there's a history behind this, because there's an actor back in 1984, John Eric Hexham, uh, died the same way, uh, using uh, the, the, the prop gun. And uh, he was filming his movie, a, a movie called A Cover Up. I don't know if you remember this one, but this was back in 1984, and the gun was just too close to his head, and he shot it. It was self-inflicted. It was self-inflicted, and he shot it. I don't know if he was, if it was part of the scene in the movie, or was he playing around in between takes? I don't know. But the gun was just too close to his head, and he shot it, and he died. You know, and that's not really supposed to happen. That's not really what's supposed to happen. Uh, but unfortunately, 
that's what happened. So anyway, our prayers go out to uh, the family of, of Helena uh, Hutchins. And we say our prayers out for Joe Souza, who's in the hospital right now. And we're going to stay on top of this story. I'm pretty sure right throughout the week and throughout the weekend, we'll not learn more about the story. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's something to, to uh, uh, watch. Okay, we're going to go to the telephone right, Portland, Maine. And of course, uh, coming up, it's 20 to the hour right now. And part of his program, part of his, uh, part of the 2020 feature, we have uh, DJ Pete on the line with us. DJ Pete, how you doing? Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Brian, and everybody else watching today. Uh, and it looks like Facebook has... Yeah, down. we're going to work on that right now. Okay, anyway, while, uh, while we're talking, okay, so a lot of news uh, this week... And recently, of course, yeah, what Frank just mentioned about uh, a cinematographer getting killed on a film set yesterday, uh, it's very tragic. It's not the first time things like this happen. Um, you know, condolences go out to the family and friends uh, of her who, who uh, passed away. Um, the police will investigate this, and if anyone... If they find negligence, uh, it's probably going to be a court case at that point, mm -hmm. uh, in my guess, uh, for things like this. Uh, let's move forward with uh, birthdays this week. Uh, Cozy Cole, born uh, October 17th, 1909. Uh, he was an American jazz uh, drummer and worked with Cab Calloway, Louis Armstrong, and many others. He did his own version of Topsy, where... You hear him in the beginning say, Topsy. Yeah, part, part one. two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then did another version, Topsy Part Two. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, great, great drummer there. Uh, Chuck Berry, Charles Edward Anderson Berry, October 18, 1926. Uh, Maybelline, rock and roll, be rock and uh, I'm sorry, roll over Beethoven, rock and roll music, and Johnny Be Good is some of his hit tunes uh, he did. Uh, Piano Red, Will, uh, Willie Lee Perryman is his name, uh, October 19th, 1911, uh, later in life known as Dr. Feelgood, and uh, you may hear some uh, uh, modern day blues artists talk, uh, talk or sing about Dr. Feelgood. Uh, American blues musician, first to be, first to uh, hit the pop music charts, um, uh, and uh, record a lot of blues and R&B stuff back in his day. Uh, Wanda Jackson, October 20th, 1937. I actually got to meet her in 2002 at a rock and roll festival in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, American singer-songwriter, uh, queen of rockabilly, she is called. Uh, also a country music artist and uh, one of the first uh, female stars of that uh, music genre. Uh, let's see, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, John Burke's Dizzy Gillespie is his name, October 21st, 1917, American jazz trumpeter, band leader, composer, educator, uh, he was a trumpet virtuoso and improviser, uh, in, in his day of, uh, when jazz started to change into improv style of music. Uh, Stephen Lee Cro uh, Cropper, October 21st, 1941, sometime known as The Colonel. He was in both Blues Brothers movie, known as Steve the Colonel Cropper. Uh, American guitarist, songwriter, and record producer. Uh, guitarist of the Stax Records house band, Booker T and the MGs. And, uh, and uh, work, uh, back to many artists like Otis Redding, Sam and Dave and many more. Uh, Bobby Fuller, born this week, uh, October 22nd, 1942, American rock rock and roll and rockabilly singer. Um, some of his music, well, uh, he did a cover of the Cricket's I Fought the Law, uh, and which became very popular. Uh, let's see, Annette Funicello, October 22nd, 1942, American actress and singer. Uh, began her professional musical uh, her professional career as a child performing uh, at the age of 12. Uh, one of the most popular things she did was she was part of the Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, 
Yeah. And a teenager. <laughs> she's, se she's 79 today. Huh? She would have been 79. 79, yeah. yes. Uh, born October 22nd, 1903, Jerome Lester Horitz, uh, also known as Curly Howard, one of the members of the Three Stooges. He was an American vaudevillian actor and comedian, uh, best known for working with the Three Stooges, also, uh, which also featured his elder brother, Mo, and Shep Howard, and actor Larry Fine. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't... Uh, Curly started off, actually, I think Shemp started off, but yeah, uh, initially, it was Curly took over, right? And then when Curly got sick at some point, Shemp took exactly. over later on. Exactly, right. I'm, uh, I'm proud to say that uh, that uh, uh, Mo, uh, that the the Howard brothers were born in Brooklyn. Yes. Uh, more Brooklyn boys for you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Born also on October 23rd, 1956, Dwight David Yoakam, American singer, songwriter, musician, and actor known for his pioneering style of country music. Uh, and finally, born October 23rd, 1959, Alfred Matthew Yankovic, also known as Weird Al Yankovic. I actually got to meet him in the 1990s here in Portland. Mm -hmm. uh, American singer, musician, record producer, and actor, known for his humorous songs that make light of pop music culture, often uh, as a parody of songs. Uh, like, uh, for example, Michael Jackson's Beat It, uh, which was filmed in like a subway station. Mm -hmm. Weird yeah. Al did the same thing. They yeah. filmed it in a subway station, but it was called Eat It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and interesting enough, uh, one of Weird Al's tunes was based, which was based off a um, uh, Dire Straits song, Money for Nothing, yeah. uh, actually featured uh, Dire Straits guitarist Mark Knopfler on that record, on, on that track. Um, so yeah, pretty, that's, that's what I have for birthdays. And, uh, if you have birthdays, Frank, let's, let's hear them. And oh, then yeah. I got a little something more to say. Yeah, I have, I have two, as a matter of fact, rapper Shaggy, that's the Shaggy, uh, it's 53 today. And Jeff, uh, Goldbaum, Jeff Goldbaum, um, is 69. Those are the only two birthdays I have today. You know, those are the only two. <laughs> so happy birthday, and they live, and this, and they're both living. So happy birthday to the two of them. Uh, so yeah, and, and what else? What, what else? Did so you so say? there was some some big news that was that has been growing up for a number of years in the film industry, hmm. and it's finally come to light. And last week. The International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, which is the oldest and largest union in, in the entertainment industries. Mm -hmm. uh, we do many things. I am a member of a stage local here in Maine. There are members that are in TV broadcasting. There are members that are in the film and TV production world, where they film a t TV show or a movie. And last week, they authorized... 36 film locals in the film and TV production industries authorized a strike. Now, did they go on strike? No, not yet. Um, they were pushing many issues. One of them is uh, safety on set. They've been, they, the film industry has been known for working long hours up to 18, 19 hours on a mm -hmm. film set. Um, people driving home, lack of sleep, and then having to do it the next day. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, you know, film producers pushing people to work harder and not giving them proper meal breaks when they need to have it. Now, in, in the union world, there's things like time and a half and double time and probably triple time yeah. and things like uh, what are called meal penalties. Yeah. And the film companies, they have
billions of dollars of, uh, in their budget, and they don't care about throwing money at these people. Yes, it benefits the film workers, in, in you know, financially, but it doesn't solve the fact that these people are very tired working on a film set all day, and then especially for those that, that don't have a hotel room or something on set, they have to drive home and then drive back the next day. Mm-hmm. There's been there's been cases of people falling asleep at the wheel, getting in an accident, and, and killing people. And it's not just a film industry that does this. There's many other industries that have this problem of people working long hours and not getting proper uh, sleep periods. Yeah. Uh, eight hours off between jobs does not mean you get eight hours of sleep. You ask any doctor out there, you need a minimum of eight hours sleep to mm-hmm. to rest and be good for the next day. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what I have this week. I'm going to send my uh, radio show info okay. in the uh, comments box here for yeah. everyone to see it. And yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I got for this week on the Coffee Hour. Okay, and I'll help you out with that. Um, thanks a lot, Pete. Um, we'll catch you back here next week. More here on the Coffee Hour. Have a great week. Definitely. Weekend. Shout out to you, Frank and Brian, and everybody else watching in uh YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook world. Have a good day. You have a good one. Take care. That's Pete. Right. DJ Pete, ladies and gentlemen, of course, he's here each week with his part, and he just wrapped up his portion of the 2020 feature with entertainment news of entertainment t- entertainers and reciting all of those birthdays of people of notoriety within the entertainment uh, field. Thank you so much, Frank. If you're just joining us, oh, by the way, before uh, I go any further, I want to tell you that you can check uh, DJ Pete's show out. Uh, it's called... Uh, well, it's not, he doesn't call his name, he has no name of the show. But anyway, you can catch his show. He plays great music too. He's on www.radio-airwaves.co.uk. It's right there in the uh, section up there. You can see it right there. Uh, and let's see, also, it, uh, he's there on www.radio-airwave.co.uk, Mondays between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. And also, you can catch him on WMPG Radio in Portland, Maine, which is his hometown. And if you don't, you're not able to get the radio station itself, you can always go on the radio station website. That's worldwide, www.wmpg.org. And he's on every Tuesday, every other Tuesday between 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. All times are Eastern in the United States and Canada. So you can check that out. Okay, thank you so much for being along. If you're just joining us, uh, it's the Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen. Uh, Mary, uh, listen, you didn't have, it wasn't you that was cut off. It wasn't you that was cut off. Uh, we, the, the, we, there was a, fa- that's a Facebook problem. Fa- we, we just lost signal and it dropped off. Both, both the, uh, the, both Facebook pages dropped off at the same time. So it's a Facebook thing. When it happens like that, that's a Facebook thing. It has nothing to do with you. So it wasn't, but I'm glad that you're back anyway. And if you're just joining us, we're here every week, uh, between, uh, 10 and 11 a.m. Eastern coffee hour and of course we would like to thank you for being with us we're here every week on facebook on youtube and on instagram too thank you okay i want to tell you about those movies we're running out of time but it just gives me enough time to tell you about the movies my picks of the week you like those old classic movies from turner classic movies well i have some for you coming up and i would like you to check them out Okay, we'll start with Stormy Weather, a 1943 film with Bill Robinson and Lena Horne back in uh, 1943. That's going to be on Turner Classic Movies this Saturday at 12 a.m. That actually is tonight, Saturday morning, 12 a.m. All right, so that's uh, Friday night, Saturday morning at 12 a.m., top of the midnight hour. Uh, you can check it out, Stormy Weather, and if you can't uh, watch it in real time, you don't want to stay up that late, or you're not going to be home, or whatever it is, make an point to uh, pre-record it, DVR it, all right? Also, we have Robin and the Seven Hoods from 1964, starring the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr., and that's on uh, Saturday as well, on Turner Classic Movies at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. You also have Burr. This is a documentary on Charlie Parker, and it was uh, directed by Clint Eastwood.
back in 1988, starring Forrest Whitaker, and that's on Turner Classic Movie. I love that that, that film. It's a great movie. Uh, uh, ten uh, Turner Classic Movies, that's on Saturday, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. And here's another classic that I think you're going to like. This is the final, my final pick of the day. It's called Sorry Wrong Number, back in 1948 with Barbara, Stein, uh, Barbara Stanwyck and Bert, uh, uh, Bert Lancaster. And it's a great movie. It's uh, a 1948 movie. It's on Turner Classic Movie. And you can catch that Sunday at 3.45 p.m. Eastern. All of our shows are on Eastern. So if you uh, like those movies, check them out. If you don't like them, there's other places to go. But I, I, I'm pretty sure those are great movies. And you don't have to worry about them overlapping. They, I just gave you the time. They won't overlap. So, so you can watch them all. Uh, but uh, if you figure there are more on Turner Classic Movies that you're not sure about that, that I haven't mentioned, these are only my picks. You can go on to Turner Classic Channel and go through the menu and you can see other uh, films that may be of interest to you and you can check it out too. Uh, also, uh, if you're a subscriber to cable, you can go on uh, TV On Demand or cable TV On Demand, movie On Demand, and you can check out the networks. They have all of the shows that if you missed anything, you can go back and review them. And movie On Demand, you have other great movies. They're all there. You can check it out. It's all ha happening right there. Again, you're watching, you're watching the Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen, and it's a Friday, TGIF. Thank God a lot of people are looking forward, we're looking forward all week to this, uh, 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 this thing, uh, this night. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, D, uh, DJ, uh, he forgot to notate something. He says, oh, I forgot uh, to mention the uh, Milwaukee Braves used to be the Boston Braves. Didn't know that. 1871 to 1940, 1914. Didn't know that. Did you know that, Brian? Uh, and also, Brian left a notation tonight on uh, TCM at 6:15. The house of on the haunted hill. That's true. You see, you see what I mean? That I knew that was coming on, but that wasn't one of my picks. But see, Brian went there and checked it out. The house on the haunted hill. I think I believe that's Vincent Price on there, right? And that's Saturday at 12 noon. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Hey, he's 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 adding more stuff here. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, Sunday at 3:45 p.m. Sorry, wrong number, which I already mentioned. That's coming on Sunday at uh, 8 p.m. And uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane? See, these are great movies. I just didn't pick them. These are great movies. That's why I always direct you to uh, Turner Classic and check out the menu. So yeah, whatever happened to Baby Betty Betty Jane? Uh, Baby Jane, that was with um, Betty Davis, I remember that well, and Joan Crawford. And that's all on Turner Classic Movies. Thanks a lot, Brian. I really appreciate that. But the Boston Braves, they were the Boston Braves. I didn't know that. You see, uh, Pete, are you sure I'm not older than you? Maybe you're older than me. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but that, that's good news to know. See, this is what I'm talking about. People want to give us information that uh, I don't mention or maybe not even know about. And that's good news to know. So that goes into the sports books right there. Okay, we thank you so much for that. And also in the news, I'm pretty sure you heard about it by now. This is crazy. You know, news is crazy. Uh, Gabby uh, Petito, remember Gabby Petito? She's the one that they found. Um, uh, they found her body. She was missing for a few days, but they discovered that she it was her body that they found. She died. Uh, and it was um, it was homicide. It was homicide. Uh, and just yesterday, they found uh, the day before they found the remains of, but they didn't determine it until yesterday. The FBI uh, FBI uh, confirmed it yesterday that it, there are the remains of Brian Laundry, that was the fiance of Gabby Petito. And uh, so uh, they found found his uh, remains in Florida, and they found out through dental records. So my take on this whole thing, this is my take on the whole thing. He probably, I, I, I don't want to prejudge because it's not confirmed, but I, 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 it's, like a, it's like a story you see in a movie. He probably did it and then killed himself. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess maybe we'll never know. And who knows? Maybe it'll come out later. Who knows? We don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me here on the Coffee Hour. I thank you so much for being along with us. I had a good time. I'm sorry for the dropout on uh, 
it, it happens once in a while, and we try to make it a flawless show, but we got back in action. We're going to come back uh, next Thursday for Talk Back Live. Talk Back Live, that's every Thursday between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern. Brian Camp is along with me with Sports Update. Uh, bringing you the latest developments in today's world of sports. We engage you in conversation that's coming up next Thursday. Other than that, I will be back here next Friday between uh, 10 and 11 a.m. for more of the Coffee Hour. Brian, of course, with sports, DJ Pete. He will be here with entertainment, and it's you and I, and we'll discuss the whole nine yards. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for being along with us. Have a great weekend and a wonderful day, and I'll see you back here next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.